Crochet. Today we're having coffee and we're gonna catch you up with what's been going on behind the scenes of all of our crocheting adventures. <laughs> and Chelsea's had a very busy last six weeks with selling Girl Scout cookies with her oldest daughter, Willow, and we're so proud of all the work and effort because how many boxes of Girl Scouts cookies did Willow sell? <laughs> You're not gonna believe it. She sold 7,214 boxes of Girl Scout cookies in six weeks. <gasps> wow, and she's only 10. She is 10. And she worked every single day. I mean, it was hardly a day off. Barely a day off, but right. the days off was only because there were sports that day. So right, right. No days off. <laughs> so that was busy. And I just got back a few days ago from driving out to California from Wisconsin. And my youngest daughter moved out there. And she needed to have a car so she could get to her job. And, and I know that it would have been a very hard drive to go it alone. So I helped drive her out there and then flew back home and we had some crocheting adventures along the way. <laughs> I got to crochet a Mama Made Minnie's lovey cow, and I've decided I'm never making the pattern as it's written in the book ever again, because it was counting every stitch, There's every so row. There's so many color changes. The color changes. I've made the, this cow probably four or five times now, and the color changes are still, like I, half the time I'm like, is this right? I think I've right. miscounted something. You never know for sure, because they're, they move sometimes, right. if it's exactly right or not, and I would just rather make my own spots. Yeah. So I, I am just going to follow one of the other lovies that has a solid so I know how many stitches are in each row and I'm just going to put those spots where I want them and I will enjoy that so much more. <laughs> this tells our personality. She's a good free flower and I am very much a, I got to stick to the rules. So. so yeah, I would rather put on my own spots. And, and the reason I made the cow is because Wisconsin is the dairy land state of the country and we have the best cheese and so with Anna moving out to California, I thought that would be a nice remembrance. Every time she looked at the cow, she could think of her family back in Wisconsin. <laughs> Even though she's in the competing dairy state. Yeah, she is, but they can't compete in cheese. We have it hands down out right. here. Right, absolutely. <laughs> and we also have the special biennial Cheese Days event coming up in September, you, and we're gonna be selling plushies at that event this lots year. Lots of cows, we're gonna make a lot of cows this summer. That's right, <laughs> I'm sure the cows are gonna be a huge hit. I am sure they will be too. <laughs> oh, so we had Girl Scouts, the trip to California, and- I had surgery too. <laughs> yes, I missed all of that, that was a crazy time. Yep, I, had, I just had, two hernias fixed uh, from my last pregnancy. So it was, they were bothersome and I was tired of them. And I said, okay, we're gonna do it. And they did it. And you know, a couple days later, it's like, hmm, was this really worth it? <laughs> but I think it's gonna be worth it now. Yeah, well, and Willow had great support to keep the cookie sales going. Yep. With her other grandma, mm -hmm. and my mom, her great grandma. Yep. So there was a lot of support. And to... dad took some days off, so right. we had some transport help. <laughs> right, so it all worked out. But in the meanwhile, we were busy crocheting too. Mm -hmm. So um, I wanted to share with you one other thing um, that I was able to do this during this time is stopping at thrift stores, I'm always looking for the deal. And I found this very loopy, it's called Poodle Canache. I think that's just whatever Spanish is for Poodle. Oh, Poodle. That's my guess. So it's this Poodle yarn. I found a few different colors. There's a brown, a lavender purple color, a black, and a cream color. And I maybe wouldn't have bought these, not really knowing what I was going to do with them, except um, Karen at Yarn and Whimsy Design, her YouTube channel, her last video, she showed the Stitch Sister Co. free snug, snuggly slug, something yeah, like that. Snug the snuggly slug. <laughs> and it's a free pattern and it's so cute. And this slug on the lower portion 
You can make it with a fluffy yarn or some novelty kind of yarns. It's just whatever fluffy stuff you have. And I'm like, oh, this poodle yarn could be really super cool <laughs> added to that. It wouldn't be a standalone yarn. It would have to go along with um, a plush yarn. But I thought that knowing what I'm going to intend to use it for, this could be super cool. So I wanted to show you that because we may make up a few of those for a future video because I just think that is the cutest little, I mean, I'm not normally a slug lover. They eat my hostas. They tend to eat tomatoes in my garden if I don't get my tomatoes up off the ground. Yeah. So I'm not a huge slug fan, but her, that slug was really super cute. cute. <laughs> but we did bring a few other things to show you today. And Chelsea's going to start out with this scarf that belongs to me. And I actually crocheted this one. But I designed it. Yes. I was actually going back. At, it's been so long since we made these. Um, I've made several myself. And I know that one of my friends bought at least one from me. Uh, but I was like, did I even design this? I'm pretty sure I did. But it's been so long. It's hard to remember. Right. I, I remember making it because I had a bunch of scraps. So this is how much of this green yarn I had, then this was how much of this brown multicolored yarn I had, red, and then this was a solid brown. And it was literally made with the last leftovers of other things. Yeah, and it's all made like back and forth. It's like each scallop is basically like a row, which is the cool part. I made another scarf that was like a much bigger, more exploded lace version of something like this, and I'm pretty sure that was my inspiration for making this. Probably back in the Doris Chan days yeah. of the exploded lace yep. book that she had. I've always we been really a, love that. Uh, yeah, I've always been an yeah. exploded lace fan. So I still love wearing this scarf. It's still something that's in my wardrobe because I get compliments on it every time I wear it, mm -hmm. and I love having... Living in Wisconsin, we have too much wind in the winter time. If you don't have a scarf around here, it's like you get cold. No matter how warm <laughs> your jacket is, you're still cold. So this is one of my favorites. And then what else do you have there? Well, uh, back when we started watching crochet YouTube, mm -hmm. um, we really got into making scrap blankets. And this is mom's scrap blanket. But she borrowed a lot of yarn from me to make the scrap blanket. I think it was at a time where I had downsized a lot of yarn, so I didn't have as many scraps. And this blanket is so cool because it's worked with two strands at one time. And it's just... It's the serendipity of wherever the yarn ends. Right. And I know we like made some fun cakes too, where we just like cut yarn and then added new yarn and made... Right, to make it simpler yeah. so you weren't always joining in new yarns, we just tied random yarns together as we were caking them up. And I I love this uh, afghan. I had made this with the intention of putting it on the back of my couch, but now that I have husky shepherd mixed dogs, there's so much dog fur that comes <laughs> off, I, I can't bring myself to put it out right now because I just don't want it to be loaded with a dog, dog hair blanket yeah so I'm kind of saving it but I think um I at least one of these two uh like the fun scrap blanket and sit down so they can see ya. and my but mine is with the granny square stitch so it's just back and forth granny square rows okay and it's really close to being done and now of course we're moving out of blanket season so it probably won't get finished until next year yeah because it's too warm to work on massive blankets if it's not cold out. Right, unless you take it along for some evening baseball games. That's true. And you could work on it in the evening time. Yep. And this, the reason why I love having projects like this almost always going, and I'm one of those people where I can have 10 projects going and I'm happy about it mm -hmm. and it doesn't freak me out. Some people can only do <laughs> one project at a time and they have to have it finished before they start something else. I like to have multiple projects because this is a brain break mm -hmm. project. You do not have to think. You can watch a movie, you could um, 
take it in the car. You don't have to follow a right. pattern. Right, you don't need a pattern. You don't need your phone. Like, you, right. it's a very tune out kind of project. Cause sometimes I struggle. I don't like to have my patterns printed because they get destroyed at my house in about two seconds. Yeah. Um, but then I get distracted by whatever electronic device my pattern is on. So it's easy for me to have something like this where I don't have to look at a mm -hmm. pattern. And I think too, Elise Rose Crochet, she did a video sometime in the last three months about how important it is to have those stress-free. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times when we're working on amigurumi items, people are stressed. And there are times even when I'm like, oh, <laughs> when am I going to get done with having to count all of these stitches, you know? And so having something that is stress-free, because isn't that why we all exactly. crochet, crochet in, the in the first place? Because it's a stress reliever, mm -hmm. and I'm a huge fan of that. Yep. So, I love my blanket projects like yeah. that. Yeah. Even if they never ever get finished, they at least relieve stress in the meanwhile. <laughs> right. So I have to just brag on um, your youngest sister, Anna Lee. When we were traveling out to California, she's like, Mom, I want to make an afghan. And so she's expanding her horizons from doing plushies to actually crushing an afghan. And she's like, well, she was interested in something with a granny square. So I'm like, hey, I can share my pattern for the, this is like a sunburst granny square pattern that I'm working on. And I'm like, I can share my pattern with you. And she's like, no, I want to <laughs> pick my own pattern. I'm like, okay, that's fine. So we start down the road and she has her giant bag of yarn and her pattern. And I briefly see her printed pattern and I'm like, I recognize that font. I'm like, that's the same designer <laughs> as this one. So she gets started and, and so, she figures out how to make that basic and that's another thing why i like afghans is once you know your basic square you just do it over and over again mm -hmm. you don't really have to consult the pattern all the time so she got her first one figured out you know we took a few attempts because she didn't quite understand all the tech the terminology mm -hmm. and then i would show her what to do so she got her first one done and then she made the next one and then she changed her colors and she made the next one and the next one and then she changed her colors made the next one because each one of her blocks is a different color mm -hmm. and then she's like i don't have enough yarn so we're Googling where the closest Michaels is. <laughs> As we're getting into Utah, we find, we stop in Park City and we pick up a few skeins of yarn there. And then we stop in Salt Lake City and we pick up a few skeins of yarn there. <laughs> and she decided she needed a fourth color. So we added another color. <laughs> and it was just really fun to see her um, grow as a crocheter and just be willing and open to learn something new because this is all new. I mean, she's 18, but she'd never picked up a crochet hook. She never even tried to yeah, crochet. Yeah, she was more of the artist with paint, well, digital artist, really. Yeah. So she preferred to do that and she left us to do our own crocheting. And right. all of a sudden she's like, wait, I think I wanna try this too because you're never gonna make me what I want. <laughs> So uh, that was really cool and I can't wait to see how that turns out. I did snap a few pictures that I'm going to share with you right now um, on the way, but she doesn't like to be on camera so she was like, no pictures of me. <laughs> but it's a really pretty pattern and we'll link to it below if you're interested in it. She was actually using the Woolies yep. yarn. From but my collection. <laughs> but it was a couple. She used Woolies, yep. but she also used a loop. And threads. Yeah, the loops and threads. I think it's Serenity from Loops and yeah. Threads. Yeah. Or they were, they were, they were very it, Charisma. It, Chariz <clears throat> charisma. Yeah, Loops and Threads Charisma, and then it's Serenity for Premiere. And I think she mixed all three of those yarns. Yeah, they were all very similar. Yep. And then when we went into the stores, um, I was like, bring the wrappers along because <laughs> it, it's easy to confuse yes. which ones are which. Definitely. So, but they were it's they were really nice. Yeah. So that was cool. And then I think the other thing I wanted to catch up, because this is a project, I don't know if we'll do a whole video on it or not, but I'm sure I'll show yeah, you. Yeah, we have like a show and tell again. Yeah, my end product 
in another month because <laughs> when is Weston's birthday? May 24th. May 24th is my the My four-year-old is turning five. It's the beginning of my family's birthday season. So we have a May birthday, two June birthdays, and then my youngest, her birthday's in August. So it's down the road, but right. there's three birthdays in less than a month. Right. <laughs> yep. So I saw on Instagram the most amazing St. Bernie's Mountain Dog plushie. And he looked just like King, who's laying right here Hi, next to us. Sleeping. And yeah, <laughs> he's our good buddy. And so I I know I was one of the first people to see that that post. So I looked at all of the comments on there because I'm like, oh my gosh, where do I get that pattern? I have to have it, right? Because Weston has been asking for a dog like King plushie for quite a while, like and, since I started making plushies. And the designer was actually crocheting it in the video and it was King and I wanted it. So um, she said that it was in her new book. So I immediately ordered the book and it came and I'm paging through it and uh, where's, <laughs> where's the Bernese Mountain Dog? Where's the Bernese Mountain Dog? So it turns out, so this is my love-hate relationship here. It turns out that there's actually not a Bernese Mountain Dog in the book, but there is a dog. And then you can customize the dog to be like your own dog. Mm -hmm. So I was so disappointed because I wanted the actual stitches. Mm -hmm. I wanted to know where the color changes were gonna happen. And now I have to figure it out for myself. Uh, on the flip side, I just said I like making my and own that's spots. that's what I was gonna point out. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't want to have to figure it out. Because it's a lot of brain, especially if you haven't made a pattern yet. It's just so much brain work to it figure is. it all out. And the Bernice Mountain Dog has three colors. You have your black, you have your brown, and you have your cream. And figuring out where they all go, it's <laughs> going to be... Well, at least you can give thing. him a tiny little strip of white, just yeah. like he actually has. Right, I can super <laughs> customize it. So... So I was so disappointed. My husband's like, return the book. Because I did specifically ask, and she specifically said that pattern was in the book. But I had told Chelsea, I said, the book itself is really cute. Cuddly Crochet Plushies by Glory Shafawara. Shafawara, creator of Crafting in Glory. And I know she has, uh, I think she has a YouTube channel too. Yeah, not for sure. But... This is the first um, group of patterns I have where a lot of the patterns are actually standing. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of value in having this book. and It's a really cute book, it, too. and it's, It is. We haven't made anything yet, but it feels like it's really well laid out. It, yeah. it reminds me, actually, a lot of the Mama Made Minis book. It, yes, it does. They're not, they're not the loveys. They're all stuffed. But it's a different, I mean, I don't have anything that has four legs that are standing. Yeah, it's a really cute book. There's a lot of really cute, adorable patterns. And we'll make sure we link it below because maybe you might like some of this too. But like yeah. this that giraffe, giraffe is adorable. The, the, there's a bird that's really cute. I just went by it. Yeah. There's like a sloth. Yeah, the sloth. I mean, really, it is an adorable book. My only disappointment was is that... I thought I was getting the Bernese Mountain Dog, not yeah. just a normal dog. And there is a oh, wolf. Oh, cute. Yeah. There is a wolf, too. So you, you could, could say even, that that's a husky. <laughs> right? And you could use this even as the Bernese Mountain yeah, Dog. Yeah, base. But I think, the, I think the body shapes are all very similar mm -hmm. if it has four legs and it's standing. Yeah. So I do think it was a good buy. And I just think that this, oh, that's like a deer. Yeah. I feel like books are always a good value over buying individual patterns yeah. just because they're, you've got so many choices for the amount of money you're spending. 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28. There's 30 patterns in wow, this book. Wow, that's awesome. And um, the it says $22.99. I'm sure I paid like closer to $20 or mm -hmm. $18 on Amazon for the book. 
but for 30 patterns. Yeah, it's definitely a good value. So you can expect to see a king plushie sometime <laughs> in the next month. I'll figure it out. Did we talk about <laughs> that we went to see the eclipse last week? Well, mom was driving to California with Anna. I went the other direction. We went from Wisconsin to Indiana to see the solar eclipse, which was really exciting. I did not crochet as much as I thought I would in the car. I thought you were going to crochet all oh, those mermaids. I, I thought I was, too. From our last too. video. <laughs> I had to do all the mermaids. I thought I was going to as well. And then we ended up starting to drive after Willow's cookie booth. It was close to 8 o'clock by the time we got on the road, and we didn't get there till 3 a.m. local time. Then we woke up in the morning and I had to like actually do my real job. And, right, remotely. <laughs> and by the time we were outside, we were just I was crocheting a little bit outside, but it was mostly keeping kids doing right. appropriate activities and you know, we didn't have to check out till noon, so we only had a couple hours at that point and then driving home, I did crochet driving home, but it was cramped because we only had our truck my van needed brakes so the brake uh -huh. the van was getting fixed while we were gone and we were elbow to elbow cro in the car and it's really hard to crochet when you don't have elbow space right so yeah did a little bit but not very much yeah well on our way out to california everyone so every gas station we stopped in and we were topping off all the time because you might go 150 miles without a gas station <laughs> out there every time we stopped I would ask people about what to expect coming up because the weather wasn't great out there. They had lots of storms in Nebraska. It was snowing like blizzard in Wyoming and they'd had snow in the Donner Pass just a, when we left here that was very deep and got plowed but was fine by the time we got to that point. So I was talking to people that I might not have ever talked to and they were all, even from way close to Salt Lake City, people were heading east to see the eclipse i couldn't believe people were coming from <laughs> all over out west i understand now but yeah like, it was a really cool experience i was really glad that we went and would definitely your do it videos again. are cool and then i've enjoyed watching some of the other youtubers because i don't watch tv i only really watch youtube i love watching what people film and about their lives mm -hmm. and the things that are going on and it was so fun to watch other YouTubers who captured that eclipse. It was so cool. Yeah. I'm very glad that we left. So I have been planning to go to this eclipse since 2017 and we I didn't go to the 2017 eclipse. It was about- Where was that one? It was in, uh, the good place to go from here was St. Louis. Um, it was a little bit closer than Southern Illinois. Cause it kind of did that other Yeah, it went cross. the other direction. Yeah. So I didn't go because I would have had to take my two kids by myself. My husband wouldn't have been able to get off of work. That was the only reason I didn't go. And I promised myself, I was like, I'm going to have an almost 11 year old the next time. So we're definitely going to go. And then we almost didn't go because we were selling 7,000 boxes of Girl Scout cookies. And then the day before, well, the day of that we would need to leave to go stay in a hotel. I was looking and looking and I found one hotel and it just happened to also take our credit card free night for the year. So it was like instantly booked and then went and we were able to watch the eclipse from our hotel parking lot and it was perfect. And I was really wow. scared of getting home because my husband only took the one vacation day and we left as soon as totality was over and we made it home in the same four and a half hours it took to get there, which was mir right. It was miraculous. Right. The whole trip was miraculous, and obviously it was meant to be that we could go <laughs> see the eclipse. <laughs> oh, I guess it was worth it. It right? was worth it. It was yeah. abs. And my husband, he's a warrior of all things, and he said, I will agree with you that it was super duper cool next week when all the kids still don't still have vision because <laughs> he was very worried that yeah. little eclipse glasses were enough to protect your eyes from the sun uh the some of the other folks that i follow on youtube they said they were so stressed out too that their kids would be safe yeah outside yep so and i have to say where we were at we knew what time the eclipse was happening and the sky looked strange that's the only word i have for it the sun was still out it was shining. We had our, the sunroof wasn't open, but the hatch part where you yeah, could see through the window back. was. And so you could see the sun was shining. It was really bright, 
but it just had this strange look to right, the sky. Right, a slightly dark. It was weird. It's, it, I didn't expect that part of the eclipse, honestly. It was like bright, bright, bright daylight, but dim at the same time. Like that's the only way. It felt like the clouds were covering it, but there were no clouds to cover it. Uh huh. It was just bizarre. Right. And then when once the sun is completely gone, it's just the coolest thing. I got goosebumps. The bird sounded like it was twilight. It was so cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. And my brother, he just happened to be in Indianapolis for work. And uh, he said that he thought it was kind of creepy. And he, well, said, he said he's working with people on a job site that they were Italian and they didn't speak English and they thought the world was coming to an end because <laughs> they, they didn't, didn't know that there was going to be a solar right, eclipse. They that didn't afternoon. know to expect that the sky would suddenly be dark in the middle of the day. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's so strange to think about. I would also be terrified if that happened and I had no clue right. what was going on. Well, I'm going to switch gears quick because we have <laughs> one more thing on our table that I wanted to share during this coffee chat because this will be coming up sometime in an upcoming video in the next few months. And the reason I wanna share this is, is this is a, like a brand new blanket someone crocheted. I found it at a thrift store for a couple of dollars. It, I don't think it's ever been used. Like someone made it and then maybe they gave it as a gift and it got donated. Like yeah. they didn't want it. And the ends weren't sewn in or the ends were crocheted over. And this one, I don't even know. Yeah, that's a tie. They just didn't get sewn in properly. So there's a little bit of fix to do. But this is such a cool little blanket. And my idea for this is to deconstruct right here in the middle to make an opening for your head and to turn this into a poncho that is maybe belted around the middle so that when you put it on and here scoot over to the middle here a little bit more Chelsea when you put it on so it'd be on like this that these sleeves would all be open but then you would run a belt around this middle section to give it some shape and then you could just wear it as like a poncho blanket soft yeah cool. really soft and really warm it's very it, it would be artsy it's a very looking. cool thing yeah you could do it this way also i, I might open it up this way because i think it looks cool having the two colors yeah half and half and then the arms would be a little bit better length also <laughs> so but that's that's the goal for this is to turn this little lap blanket into a wearable poncho that's artistic. Yeah, a fun way to repurpose crochet that maybe you have or maybe you have found or mm -hmm. anything like that, especially with the, the garage sale season ensuing in most of the United States. Yeah, or even to inspire you to make something specifically as a poncho where you could make up a blanket and leave an opening, just chain yeah. in one area where you want your head. And then when you come back around, then you, you crochet into that chain so you have an opening. Because I think wearable artistic stuff is very really stylish. Yeah. And I've watched a bunch of sewing um, for 2024, like the new fashion trends and what people are actually sewing. And I haven't sewed garments for a long time, really since you were little. We've done very little, but I was looking at making more garment type of stuff, especially I was inspired because some people knit or crochet cardigans and then they keep them in their their wardrobe mm -hmm. like forever Yeah, because they're unique. They're super cool. So I was looking at how can I do some garment stuff for myself. And when I saw this, I'm like, oh my gosh, this has got that big open weave to it. I loved it. It looks brand new and it's gonna make a really cool poncho. Yeah, it's gonna be fun to see it done because it's gonna look really nice. So that'll be coming up. I know it's not plushies, but <laughs> we do a lot more than plushies <laughs> on a normal basis. And then um, I know for the future coming up, 
I'm working on some of the Mama Made Mini frogs. I'm making a second frog out of Parfait Chunky yarn. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a tiny little cute one with a mint <laughs> green and I'm really excited about finishing that frog up and we'll bring the frog pattern. What else are you thinking about that you're working on? Oh, I've been working on some of Raven and Jade's new patterns. She put out a really cute duck and a really cute bunny and then a really cute mouse and I know she's got an adorable kitty cat in the pipeline too. So uh, I had made a couple bunnies so far and I, the mouse is next for me. Okay. So I've been having fun with those patterns and they're so cute. And she always has the most adorable little accessories for her patterns That's what too. I was just gonna say. <laughs> it's always the thing that is two thumbs up for me yeah. is adding those accessories because kids love them. And even if you aren't a person that loves to create the accessories, I guarantee you the kids love them. Yeah. So, so the one I'm making right now, it needs a granny square shirt. So that's, those are the patterns I'm working on right now. Mm -hmm. And what I'm most excited about. I also am really excited about Knots and Jack, Knots by Jack. Um, she did a collaboration with another designer and they have this really cute little cow pattern out that has no color changes for spots. So you <laughs> excited about right now is not spy jack I uh, just had a collaboration with another designer I can't remember who it is off the top of my head but they made a really cute little cow pattern and the best part is you don't have to color change the spots <laughs> you sew them on afterwards okay so I'm really excited to give that one a try and those are my top patterns uh, right now I'm excited about. I'll, I'll see what you think of it before I'll commit to making any of those because I still don't like sewing as much. Yeah. But well, we, we also made these really cute little cows. Um, I think they were by the Cozy Stitch and they're meant to be like, I call them cow tatoes because they're little round things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but I feel like they just have too many things crocheted on afterwards. So, it's no sew, but it's everything crocheted on afterwards and I do not like that. Right. I think that you can make that cow like the chubby frog pattern mm -hmm. where you do bobbles in certain places for the arms and the legs. And well, I have also seen, so the idea for this cow pattern came from awestruck crochet okay and she on her instagram she was showing the stuff she'd made for her next market and those cows were in there and then the last video she showed of the stuff she took i didn't think and i could be wrong correct me if i'm wrong if you watch the same thing but i don't think she sewed those arms and stuff on yeah they, they look more like you said a potato yeah a cow tato <laughs> and that that's exactly what i've come to is they've sat on my countertop for the last couple mm -hmm. weeks and i look at them a lot and i think they are perfectly adorable without arms and legs i think they're perfect right. as they are so they're just gonna be little cow tatoes yeah and i think if i make them and i want arms and legs i'm doing a bobble stitch yeah and that's the end of it i also love the the cow the mini cow from um the traveling pony yeah that's still one of my favorite I'm gonna have things to try that making I crochet. That. I haven't and done that yet. I made it with a velvet yarn and I just still love, I have to, I don't know which velvet yarn that was. I, I'm pretty sure it was the Chenille Home Slim. I loved that one. And even though it wasn't your favorite yarn to work with, it ended up being my really favorite cute. yarn for a cow. Yeah. I love it. So I know we'll be working on um, making up enough plushies for the cheese days because that event is like hundreds of thousands of people. Ten. They said at least 10,000 people is the estimated traffic for the, sh the Just maker the craft, market. Right. So we'll be making a lot of toys. And we are the exclusive plushie makers. Right. <laughs> That's a no scary. pressure. <laughs> we have such a busy summer coming up. But it, we have so much fun making these items that I'm sure yeah. we're going to have a big assortment of things. Yeah. If you have any suggestions for patterns we should try that 
don't require taking a million things because my crochet time this summer is going to be at the ballpark and in the right. car. Right. So if you've got some suggestions for things I should try, I would love to hear them in the comments. So I had to be very particular about what crochet project I was taking to California. A, out of the 32 hours of actual driving time, I drove about 29 of those hours. <laughs> so I was crocheting in the evening, mostly after we would stop and we did have one snow day. So that's where I got the majority of my stuff done. But I had four skeins of yarn with me and I was traveling with a backpack because I could find a ticket out of Sacramento back to Chicago for $37 with only a traveling personal item, which was a backpack. And so it was funny because uh, we went to those two yarn places and Anna's <laughs> like, oh, look at this yarn. You want to get that? I'm like, Anna, I have a backpack. <laughs> so I couldn't buy any yarn. In fact, I gave away one of my nice, like zip up fleecy shirts and a couple of other shirts to bring my yarn home because bringing the yarn home is more important than some of the clothes that I have. You can bring them home next time. But it is when you use plush yarns it expands. I just I think my house is exploding with yarn and right now in my living room I have to vacuum because they're shedding yarn all over. You can't you can see where I sat last night uh -huh. crocheting. Yeah. So that's a for sure have to do today, but it's so much fun. It's just and the kids love it so much. So it, we're just having a good time and mm -hmm. we hope you'll turn tune in again. If you're interested in making any amigurumi and you want to learn some shortcuts, go check out that video. It'll be right there.